Now, our next guest is working on an absolutely beautiful and unusual indie game called Beyond Eyes. Let's welcome to the stage Sharida Halito. Hey! <laughs> welcome! Hey! Thrilled to finally get the chance to meet you. Please yes. come join me. All right. Now, Sharita, I was wondering if you could yes. tell me a little bit about the core gameplay of Beyond Eyes. OK, so um, it's an exploration game. And it right. literally means that if you don't explore, you don't get to see anything, because the whole world is completely white uh, until you start walking around. So because she's blind, she kind of uses her other senses to visualize the world. So if she smells things, or if she hears certain sounds, she will just um, visualize them as she perceives them at that moment. Um, but then because she's kind of sheltered, uh, she, not always, she doesn't always have the right reference to pull from. So she hears something, and she thinks of something that she knows, because it's familiar in a garden, for right. example, like a, a fountain or something. Uh, but then when she comes closer and smell kind of starts coming in, she realizes this is not a fountain. It's actually a very nasty sewer drainage. <laughs> and you kind of play with yeah. that. I mean, I mean, the big thing that I always, you know, immediately strikes me when I see the footage is just the beautiful art style. But of course, audio is a really interesting piece to the way that the environment's explored. Absolutely, yes. Yeah, tell me a little bit about that, audio as a mechanic. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> I can do that. No, um, I wanted to make the game work on several levels. So with the audio design for the game, we started thinking about sounds that are similar to other sounds and oh, huh. kind of identify what um, something can be. Um, and the same thing, like we wanted to make sure that the way it's visualized works right. with that theme as well. I mean, in terms of the art style, as you're iterating through, you mean you're talking about visual representations different from what it actually is. Yes. What was that process like of testing these to make sure that the player wouldn't be confused while exploring these environments? So originally, when I started making this game, I was in college. So we would mm -hmm. basically, um, I started working on it with a friend. And we would have this basket of cupcakes, and like say to other people, other classmates of us, they were also <laughs> testing, like, can you come in? You get a free cupcake. Here's a bunch of sounds, textures, uh, smells. Can you tell me what you think it is? To kind of huh. get that um, baseline of what some things that, how things right. were perceived by different people based on their experiences. So that was kind of the start of it. And um, yeah, after that, it's just a lot of thinking and talking to people and, yeah. and trying, basically, iterating on the, on the thing. And what has really been a big challenge for you as an indie developer working on a first-time title like Beyond Eyes? Scope, basically, yes. So Beyond Eyes, I think I was lucky that I never made uh, and released the game before because I probably... So I've been working on the game for four years. Yeah. Um, and if I had known from the start that it was going to be this long of a process, I probably <laughs> would have contained myself a little better. But because I didn't know, I kind of got very overly excited and started we kept adding things, and it became a lot bigger um, and more ambitious. So I, yeah, getting the scope there was uh, certainly a good lesson for a future project. Well, I mean, I've said this before, and I will continue to say it. I think the art style is absolutely beautiful, and I look forward to the final product. Thank you so much, Thank Sharita. You.